Hello fellow survivors and welcome back to Road to 500 Days. I'm here where you left me in the stormy vacant depot ready to go to Forsaken Airfield. So this is a special episode. We're now entering the far territory unless you count the branch line of course. And in this particular episode it's also a special one because we're going to do a giveaway. So pay attention during the episode and at some point I'll give the information on how you can win a code to win the far territory for yourself or a friend if you would like that. If you're watching this in the future and the giveaway is already over, you can still enter without winning in a fun way. I'll get to that when I get to that. In any case, we are here now uh, on day 80. We're at the vacant depot. We slept quite well. I picked this up this and we're well rested, but the weather is not great. So I think we're going to uh, do some inventory. We are carrying way too much stuff. And uh, let's have a look here, leave some stuff. Yes, that's that's right. So we're going to drop some stuff. We're carrying way too much. Um, we don't need this much coal. There isn't that much coal actually in Forsaken Airfield, but nevertheless. Drop some wood. Uh, we don't need any of this stuff that uh, can't wear. Yeah, uh, oh, well, might as well eat stuff. Eat some rabbits. Now we'll get rid of some stuff. Now we're drinking a lot of water here, yeah, okay. Uh, we do need water, you, you always need water. We don't need the marine flares, drop those. We don't need two of these. Um, what else do we not need? Mm, we can take that maybe. Oh, I wonder if you can actually make one here. I don't think so, though. Let's harvest the worst torches. I should lighten the load a little bit. Anything else? Um, uh, no, we're taking this to make the bow. That's that's right. Let's see what else. Ten percent of that bow. Uh, I guess that is about it, really. Quite heavy, because I'm carrying a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I guess that is it, actually. Uh, but I might leave some water behind. Like, a liter. The rest will disappear. Now, let's see here. Um, the weather's not great. But not awful, either. Let's see. Is there anything I can do, like create or anything, while we wait? Uh, but I'm now leave that, I think. Let's have a look if there's anything else I can drop or do. I'm going to take the cooking stuff with me and just sort it out over there, uh, I think. Yeah, I think so. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything to leave behind. I missed matches yeah uh, well we'll take this with us I, I think might actually just go it's noon sure it's a bit windy but that's okay let's just go i think ah it was kind of kind of clearing up now before we head up there i'm just going to check quickly is it possible to fish here i don't think so because um this is more of a swamp type area I doubt it. Oh, there's coal here. I'm already heavy, so... What difference does it make? Let me see. Uh, fishing hole. Suitable ice. Okay, this is not suitable ice then. Interesting. Okay, it made sense. I didn't think we could do that. Okay, so we're gonna head into Forsaken Airfield now. One second. Yeah, all looking good. Had an accident last time. Now... Keep, uh, one thing you should know also about this episode, you might realize that the sound might be slightly different. So I apologize if there is a bit of a uh, situation with the noise, uh, because we have also recently moved city. So I have a new gaming room, but I haven't sorted it out yet. So as of this recording, the tower, desktop tower, is actually next to the microphone and as it gets hot it sometimes makes this whirring noise. 
So it's possible that in this episode, until I sort out my, my gaming room, uh, there might be some background noise. We also live in a very rainy place, so it rains a lot and you can hear rain sometimes. But, uh, so there might be some minor stuff. Now, one thing that's interesting, I only recently learned this actually, <coughs> over there is the way to the Forsaken Airfield. We can actually go up here, this little path here. I never realized you could, uh, you could go here until recently. It's a little path. And up here, I think there's rabbits. And there's some uh, old man's beard. Uh, actually, I don't see any rabbits. It's just the one on the road. But there's uh, rose hips and a little uh, viewpoint. Oh, I can see the power cables and everything. Look at that. You can get a name. Broad Airy. That's cool. Very nice. Uh, let's make a fire. Just to warm up. We can... We can map this. Yeah. Oh, it's also possible you might hear my wife in the background as well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because we haven't sorted out uh, all the stuff. So be wary of some some background noise in this particular episode. It's a transition episode. Okay, let's see. Let's put on one of these coals. Uh, two coals, which we happen to have found. Uh, and I think I'm going to drop all my teas. Then I'm going to map. Hey, I didn't really show anything. I blew out the fire. How about that? Oh, the wind change. That's why. Wind change. The neat little area is kind of like the second ravine. Where you got, you know, you got uh, ptarmigans, you got uh, uh, rabbits. And I swear I've seen a deer here once, but I'm, I'm not I'm not sure to be honest with you if there is a deer here. Pretty sure I've seen one, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Uh, let's just uh, this is actually here. Yeah, we will just pass a little bit of time to warm up a bit, a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. Then I'm just gonna take all of the stuff and let's head out. I was going to bring some torches, but because it's uh, so windy, I don't see the point. We'll drink one of these teas when we get uh, the need to do so. But now we're going to head into Forsaken Airfield. An area of very mixed opinions. A lot of people really like it, a lot of people really don't like it. For various reasons. I was fortunate enough to... Oh, and about this. I was fortunate enough to try out the region blind, which is something I always try to do when a new area is released. I tried to go there on the interloper, completely blind, not knowing anything about it. It's not always possible. I did that on Blackrock uh, when that came out, but because Blackrock was in story mode, I kind of knew the map already. I just didn't know where things were. But when this came out, though, um, I just immediately went to try and go there without knowing anything about it. And that was quite a lot of fun. I do recommend doing that if you can. And I do have a video about it as well. Now up here is a shortcut. You can actually get up here. Uh, that leads to the airfield. Uh, it does require a bit of trickery. Let's uh, drink something. Uh, let's drink the acorn coffee. Should heat up. Yeah, yeah, didn't really do much. But if you climb up this tree here, uh, as far as you can, and then you use a limb, I think it's this limb, and you jump onto the ledge, and then onto this ledge, and then you are pretty much just up. Ta-da! Parkour. And this is actually the exit from the airfield. 
But there is also passage further up ahead. That is a bit difficult. Um, so we're not going to go this way, but it is possible to go to the airfield this way if you're just a little bit sneaky. We're not going to do it. We're going to take the regular route. It is quite cold though, so if I could manage to get out of the wind, that would be great. Let's drink tea or coffee. Uh, row sip, yeah, let's drink the row sip tea. Yeah, I warmed up a bit more, that's much better. Okay. So I don't take too much damage. Sounds like there's ptarmigans up there. Because I heard a little clocking noise. We don't need ptarmigans right now though. And now it's still a long walk until we get to the actual airfield because it's so... It's a long, long, long road. But we've still got some walking to do. That's the thing, this area is so far away from the rest of the world. It's like a massive trek just to get there. And a lot of people don't like that. They think it's too long. And I feel like the rewards for going there should be greater. In my opinion, when it first came out and it was kind of barren, uh, I didn't mind it just because it was, frankly, it's a fun place to go. Uh, I did message Hintlin at the time and tell them that I personally felt they should add Sri Lanka's lantern to, in this region instead. And it should be an interloper as well to give more of an incentive to go there. Uh, but then instead they added signal void and of course signal void requires the radio so in order to unlock the bunkers and the story mode and to get the technical balaclava you have to come to forsaken airfield so i think that in and of itself is a reward enough they're basically saying like look this area exists it's far away it's a long journey it's a dangerous region and if you want the technical balaclava, you have to not only go to this region, you have to leave the region, do a whole big story mission thing in survival, and then come back to this region. So it's gonna be a long, long run, but it is an option if you want to do it. And if you're in it for the long run, if you're in it for the long survival run, then that gives you something to do, and it's gonna take a long time to do it as well. And we're gonna do it. We are gonna do it. Uh, we might, pick up the radio this episode we might do it next episode it depends i'm not sure about that we'll see um but uh regardless it's um it's a fun thing i like this region i think it's got a unique design to it i think it's i always say the same thing i think it's deceptively open in the sense that you can clearly see everything in this region once you get to it but therein lies the folly so if you then suddenly get lost if a blizzard hits or a fog hits then suddenly it becomes very dangerous because you get lost and i got lost uh i often don't get lost in this game because i know it so well but it does happen those of you who are faithful viewers who have seen this series all the way into now may remember i actually got lost in episode two in hushru valley because i misremembered one of the the paths and I thought I was on one but I was on the other and I got actually a bit lost. I was probably going on about it a little bit. <laughs> um, and I have gotten lost here in Forsaken Airfield as well once. I just gave up. I was looking for the airport. I had a general idea where it was but uh, I was in a blizzard. I couldn't find it so I lit a fire by a stone and just waited it out and then found it afterwards. But I like that. I really like a very open area like this. So here we are. We are here. We can see the airfield. Look at that sight. Behold the forsaken airfield, the runway and all its glory. Now before we do anything else, I'm actually gonna start a little fire here where it looks sheltered. Let's warm up a little bit because we still got our ways to go. And we still got a few things to do. It's a long, long journey. There are shortcuts to get there. If I'd taken the shortcut I mentioned earlier, I would have been there by now, probably. And there's a shortcut from here too, which I think we'll probably not take because there are some things I want along the way. But I want to warm up a bit first. 
So let's uh, put two of these on. And uh, let's see here. Acons. Yeah, we can. Uh, water. We got enough water. Torches done. Let's map. There we go. Now, a few things to point out here. So, the Forsaken airfield is right there. That's the main area you want to loot. There's loads of stuff there. Uh, there's uh, clothing you can find and gear. And of course a recipe, which we want. We want to get the recipe. This is one of the places where there's a recipe. And the main thing you really go here for is the radio, which is in there. Uh, this is, that's the main thing. There are other things also to loot, like the uh, island cottage over there, the mindful cabin, which is over here somewhere behind there, and there's a cave at the corner over there, which is interesting. But about this area we're in right now, it's actually a shortcut down. We are actually going to go all the way around the normal route, but you could very easily actually go down here. It looks dangerous, but it's actually really easy. You just go along the sides, under this, and you end up down here where it's uh, icy. And underneath us now there's a cave. And in that cave you can actually find matches sometimes. Uh, I found that, but only once. So I think it was a probably a random chance. I don't think it's a regular match spawn, but I'm not sure. Uh, but at least it gives you shelter. And then you can just go up, up here, all the way to the airfield. And there's cattails here. And not really any wolves. So you, if you spawn in Forsaken Airfield, you actually spawn at the end of this road. And you can run all the way here and then down here and up to the airfield. And you're pretty good. You're set. Isn't that great? Now, I think that this will blow out, won't it? Or is it not windy enough? Uh, this seems like it should be too windy to me. But it doesn't actually blow out. Oh, weird. Okay, in that case, first, let's eat some rabbit and whatnot. Uh, eat this. And let's also have drink. And then we're going to grab some torches. Like, just good torches, ideally. To just uh, carry the fire with us. Nah. The bad one's going to toss away. Future Zack can find it one day. Some rubbish strewn about. Be like, well, who, who made this mess? And then uh, we'll figure that out another time. Just a pile of torches somewhere random in the world. These are good. Uh, acceptable. We can actually carry that one. No. And then we got one more here. That's a good one. Okay. Now let's head on. So we could take this shortcut down here. And that would take us to the Forsaken Airfield very easily. If you want to see that in action, you can just watch my... Um, not the blind one, but I have a few other Interloper Forsaken Airfield videos. Like one on stream that's on my uh, second channel, the Archives, Sacrament Archives. But there's also one where I have a walkthrough of this area. Where, yeah, you see me do it. Here you can see a better view of the whole region. So... We are now going to take this road and go all the way around and come out at the airfield. And all the way over there, there's an island. There's an island cottage there. Can be a hammer there, actually. Hammer can spawn there. And over there, you can't really see it, but over here is the mindful cabin. And then there's a crash helicopter over there. And then there's some misc loot around and some other places that are of, of interest. And yeah, there's two bears and one moose. And a bunch of wolves. I actually mistakenly have said in the past that there can be timber wolves here. But I don't think that is true. Uh, the reason I said that is, well, for one thing, you can find quite a lot of marine flares here. But more than that, um, the first time I played here, I looked over the plains and I saw four, group of wo four, four wolves in a group walking around. And from a distance, they really looked like timber wolves. Uh, in a group, so I just said to myself, oh, that's Timberwolves. And then when people asked me, like, are there Timberwolves? I just said, yeah, yeah, there's Timberwolves there. <laughs> but uh, I think that was most likely just four wolves. 
um, because I haven't seen it since, and I haven't heard anyone else say that they found him wolf set. So I think that was a was an error on my part. Here we are in a cave that's along the route. We'll pick up this coal. Long, long journey here, and we got a little bed here. We'll make a little fire again, just to stay warm, and we can map this as well. It's a long, long journey. The shortcuts make it easier, but we're not doing that. We're just kind of doing it vanilla. On, but when I come back here, though, I am definitely going to take the shortcuts. And I will be back here at least, you know, at least once, because I have to for single void. So we'll be back here, for sure. Alright, let's map. There we go. And let's light a torch. There we are. And onwards we go. The main reason we're taking this route instead of the shortcuts is... Well, for one thing, if you're watching this and you haven't been to Forsaken Airfield, you might want to get a feel for how vast this place is, how far you have to go, or what a journey it is, and this is, would be like the vanilla route to go, so that's one thing. But the other thing is that there's a Polaroid to pick up, and we want that Polaroid, because uh, it reveals quite a lot of the map in this region. Oh, it blew out. Let's see what we got here. Nothing's in here, is there? No. There we are. Nothing. This is like the good old days. Like, uh, those of you who have followed my channel for a long time will remember when I was a streamer on Twitch. That's how I started out with the Long Dark. And back then, this is over three years ago now, as of this video. Uh, longer, even. And at the time, my wife and I lived in this tiny little flat, like a one one bedroom flat. It had the two. The whole flat was two rooms, and well, and the internet was horrendous, but it was good enough that we could actually stream, although with low quality. So what we'd often do would be that uh, I would sit in one room and stream and my wife would be in the other room and she would play usually overwatch and because it was just those two rooms in this old tiny flat it was an au pair flat very 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 small i think it was like 40 square meters or something um we could hear each other or, or at least the recording could so when i used to stream you could always hear my wife in the background talking uh, because even though she was in a different room, just because it wasn't very soundproof. And sometimes we would even sit in the same room because we just liked each other's company, despite it being noisy. So if you've seen any of my old streams, uh, some of which are on my archives, but not many, you can hear my wife in the background all the time. Uh, and then when we moved, um, I got my own gaming office, which wasn't soundproof, but very rarely heard stuff from outside the room. And now we're back in another place again, where it's uh, we haven't really set it up properly. So uh, I can hear my wife playing. You can probably hear it faintly in the background. And that's just uh, how it is now. But we're going to eventually over time, I would like to make this into like a, a gaming streaming room, soundproof or that sort of thing. But at the moment in this episode and maybe the next one, I don't know. Yeah, there might be a bit of a transition period where you'll hear background noises. There might be static. There might be, uh, you might hear my wife. You might hear my computer because I haven't set it up properly. Uh, you might hear a little thundering noise, which is rain. There's all sorts of things. Um, so bear with. This whole series, this Road to 500 Days series, is really a journal of some sort because it really is in a way a tale of time because for one thing it's definitely going to take the entire dlc to complete 500 days 
uh, starting with DLC part one in episode one, and now we're in part three, and there's six parts. So I'm definitely going to experience the entire DLC through the course of this series, and they've been gradually released throughout the episodes. And if you're watching this in the future and everything has already been released, you get a glimpse into the progression of the game from the beginning of the releases to the end. But also you experience things personally, like things happening in my life. Like for example, when episode one happened, I was not a father and now I am a father. And then we've moved. There's all sorts of things happening in the course of this, um, this series. So it's not just a road to 500 days. It's also a, a road of life, if you will. Okay, so here we are in the trailer. This is one of only three indoor locations in the game, in, in the air region rather. And there are places around where you can be warm and everything. Uh, but there's only three places that are indoors. And it's this one, the hangar, and... No, there's four. And the trailer by the airport and Justice Hovel. There's four, I, can, I think. That's it. Okay, in here, there should be a Polaroid on the left one here. You can actually see it there, see? <coughs> here it is. Yeah, that's the one in the south, I think. No, this is not. No, this is the cabin one, the north one. Right. And then, I think I'm actually going to spend the night here because it's getting dark and I'm cold. And I don't really want to go to the airport in the dark because when you get this a bit of pain to loot it in the dark. Take that. Good, good measure. Workbench, good to have. And la, 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 la. anything else? Oh, soup. First aid kit, bandage. And hmm. Check what I have. Maybe I won't stay here. I'm not sure. Actually, might press forward. Let's uh, pass some time though to warm up. Yeah. Let's have a look at the weather outside. Also quite heavy, I assume. Oh, it's quite clear, I must say. I think we're gonna keep going, actually. Change my mind. We're pretty close. Uh, there's usually like one wolf in the way. Uh, if you follow the main road to the Forsaken Airfield, there isn't much danger in the way. By the way, if you see up here, you see right, right there? The dark patch? That's a cave you can go into. You go up this road, road here. We'll go there at some point. And it's a shortcut. It goes through the waterfall nearby. And there's usually a man, like or rather a corpse there, with a backpack with possible misglute. And this is a shortcut across the river. If you don't do it, you're gonna have to billy go down and go up or go around. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> this is a long route. Uh, but from here, if you follow the road, it's like how it is in most games, you know, you're safe. <laughs> most games have that. If you just follow the main road, eh, you won't have that many hostile encounters. Go off the road and they're all over the place. Here is the same. You don't really get that many wolves around, but when you approach the airport, there's a little open field next to the road where there's very often two wolves and um, they can aggro you. But here there's usually not really much of a threat. I'm getting very tired, so I think once we get there, we're not going to loot very much. Uh, we're just going to sleep, and I have the bear bed roll, so I'm just going to sleep right away, I think. And loot it in the morning. Uh, but we'll see. At the moment, uh, if you have noticed, my stamina is regenerating slower. So if I sprint and then wait for this to expire and then recharge, it's going to take longer than usual. And that's because if you look at my fatigue meter down there, the eye symbol, you see there's less than 25% less left. Um, all of the meters in Long Dark work in quarters, so 
whenever 25% is passed, so basically a quarter of the pie, so to speak, the description changes from something like well rested to tired to drained and so on, you know, uh, uh, fed, uh, peckish, hungry, very hungry, and so on, right? And with the fatigue, if it goes below 25%, the sprint recharges more slowly. If it's above 25%, it is the same across the entire range. Uh, it's always the same. This doesn't really impact the game very much, because by then you're so tired you should be resting anyway, but it's a detail you might not know about. It's mostly of use in speedruns. Because once you're tired, you're going to recharge much slower. So here we are. Sign to the airport. Looks like we've got a nice clear night. And you can go this way and you get to Mindful Cabin eventually. It's a long walk, but you get there. Or you can take this road and you get to the airport. And again, you could just cut across here. It's literally right there. We're going to again follow the road. Uh, <clears throat> there can be a wolf here as well, actually. Not I, think. I have seen a wolf on the left there once, uh, but not often. See here? And we're running low on health because it's this such a long cold. journey that we're taking oh, cold yeah. damage, like a lot of cold damage. And the way around that is of course to light fires along the way. You could stay in that trailer and sleep there. You can, you can definitely do this journey without taking much damage at all. You can just stay in the vacant depot and then you make your way to that cave I was in. And you can stay in that cave and heat all the way up and get rested. Maybe even stay the night if you like. Then you go to the trailer, stay there, uh, same thing. And then you go to the airport or the cave that's nearby here. There's a cave down here, which is the one I talked about uh, up here. Here's the road, see? Up there is the road. Uh, where you can take the shortcut down into a cave. So there's also a cave there. So there's also the resting places uh, that you can use to warm up and take a rest. And plus you can just make a fire on, along the way and heat up too. So I kind of like that, that it's a long journey and therefore it's perilous just by default. You're going to get cold and you take a lot of damage. Uh, and I, I kind of like that. It makes it unique and makes it a very, a very dangerous trip. Now for me though, as I always say, you know, health is a resource. So I use my condition as a fifth uh, meter that I can use to travel further. So as long as I don't get hypothermia, which is still a while away, I should be fine. I don't really care if I get to the airport with 1% health, as long as I'm not dead. So here I'm cold, I'm tired, but we're practically there. I probably will get there with very low health. But that's okay. If I'm really uncertain, I'll just make a fire, warm up a bit, uh, or pop a stim if I need to. But I like using my health as a resource to get places faster, uh, so to travel further. But I only do it if I know I can actually regenerate when I get there. You should never do what I'm doing now if you're in an area you're unfamiliar with. If you don't know the area, and you push forward using your health as a resource when you don't need to, that's very dangerous because you don't know when you can heal next or where you can heal next. So that's very dangerous and it could lead to the end of the run. Uh, instead, you've got to just push forward as far as you can until you can stop somewhere, right? But here, if you know where the next stop is, if, if you have a destination in mind, and you know you can get there safely uh, without dying, even if you take a lot of damage, then really the, the, the your health is just a, another resource for you to use to get there. But in this particular case, now I'm drained, I'm tired, I'm freezing, I'm going to die. But I know I can make it. The hangar is right there, and in the hangar I'm warm, I got, what, 20% left or something of my health? I'm not going to take 20% damage going from here to there. I might get there with very low health, but I'm not going to die. The only thing that would kill me right now is a wolf. Right? That's why I have the stress pistol up. Because if a wolf does show up now, I'm not taking my chances. 
I'm not going to shoot with the bow because if I miss, the run is over. But if I had the stress pistol, I'll be alright. In this field right here, this open little field here, there can, there can be wolves. It's not uncommon to find wolves here. Uh, so that's the main threat, really. Um, but other than that, there aren't that many wolves around this particular point. So here we are at the hangar of the airfield. Lots of loot around here. And we're going to check out this whole area. There's a load of places to loot, but most of the loot is very, very minor. It's really not that much to speak of. But there are a few things. Uh, there's the recipe we want. There's the radio, of course. And there are some um, suitcases that can have clothing as well. Uh, so there's quite a few things. You can also loot the helicopters. And I have almost never found anything in the helicopters on Interloper. But I, I, that has happened. So um, I will check them. And here we are. Um, I am now in the hangar. And I am safe. So we are good. I do need to do some hunting though. Because I don't have that much food. Okay, here we are. We're not going to loot it now, though. We're going to stay here. Uh, if I stay here rather than in the basement, I could get insomnia, but that's a risk I'm willing to take right now. I'm going to eat some food. Should have maybe eaten one of these things, but do that. Eat that. Let's eat this too. And let's also eat this. And have a drink. And then we're going to sleep. We're not going to freeze here because now we're indoors. So we we'll sleep here for 10 hours. We'll generate some health. We'll warm up. Get to daylight. We can loot much better. There we are. And let's have a drink. And let's sleep another two hours. Actually, it looks like three, but I think it is two. I'm still going to sleep 3-3. Three, three. And then it should be light. There we are. Now we have gained some health. We are here in the, uh, in the airfield itself, the hangar. And we're ready to loot. <laughs> okay, so let's look around. So in this particular entrance here, there's uh, one thing that's always there, which is this cotton toque. There we are. And we'll open, we'll loot this open area later. We're going to go, uh, no, we'll loot down here first. So down here, most of them are like small offices where you'll find a little bit of like misglued, like chocolate and stuff. It's a lot of places to loot. It's a bit like the dam. Like the dam in Mystery Lake has a bunch of things to, to loot. But most of the loot you get, especially in Interlope, is very minor. You don't get a lot of stuff here. Uh, but you got to check it nevertheless, right? A lot of cloth, which is this. If you need cloth, come here. There's loads and loads and loads of it. Let's have a look. Scrap metal will take that. Take this for wood, why not? Scrap metal. And I got the next one. Like an office. Oh, I gotta check on the baby. Be right back. Okay. This is an office. What we really want is the kitchen. I hear this is... Might as well loot all of it just to see if there's anything. But it's mostly just misc stuff. You know, like... <clears throat> there'll be uh, chocolate or something. Wood, scrap metal, etc. Tinder. Okay, that's it for this level. Let's go, we'll do the open area later. Let's go up here. I'm not going to run because we don't need to. It's cool. Reminds me a bit of the hangar in Wintermute in episode 1 where Will has his plane. But much, much bigger. Oh, that's creepy. I just realized that now. That that is swinging. <laughs> the chain. <laughs> I never noticed that before. 
That's funny. And these are also swaying. Hmm. Okay. Okay, over here we have a little storage room where we got tools. Nice. Nobody needs this anymore. Your leather. What else, if anything? I'm not going to check the crates until later. That's another thing to do in the long run. Uh, in here we got oh, we got some food, beef jerky, dog food. As oh, the kitchen, so I bet the recipe says that. Yeah. So here's the recipe: camber flight porridge. Ooh, nice. Can open. Might as well pick that. So that is this one. Maple syrup. We got some in Broken World, I think. And rose sips, that's easy. Pinnacle peaches, okay. And running river oats. Oh. Running river oats, I think you can only get that in single void bunkers. I don't think you can get that anywhere else. On Interlope, I'd be surprised if you find one one of those. Gives you a headache, but also max condition. Oh, that's cool. Make it one day. Very cool. Okay, so we got the recipe. That's two out of nine recipes down. We need to get all the recipes, of course. All the recipes. That was one of the main things to collect here, even if you don't use it. Oh, is that salt? Is gosh, I almost didn't see it. It looked like it's the. It looked like this thing. I wasn't going to pick it up. <laughs> salt. That's great. That is great. Okay, and check everything else as well. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, yes, that's, okay, that's great. That is one big thing down. Very nice. Okay, cool. Next, we got the shower room. Now, this is a weird one because you can actually find a dead rabbit here. Let's see if it's here now. It's in this shower here. Let's see. No, okay. You can actually, right here on the floor, you can find a dead rabbit, which is weird. I don't know why that's in there to begin with. This is actually the first time that I haven't found it. Um, I'll take a little bit of water. Uh, so I don't know if they changed it or it's just a glitch or, or, or not glitch, but like just a random chance there for me, but it is weird that that's there. I'm not sure. It's the same in Blackrock. In Blackrock, you can find a wolf quarter bag. This will come in handy. Uh, when you spawn there in the stairs, or one, if you don't take it, because you know, it despawns. But I guess that makes a bit more sense because there's wolves everywhere. Uh, so someone just started quartering it and they left it in a, in a hurry. But the rabbit in the shower, I don't know what that's about. Probably some joke that I'm not familiar with, some reference or something. If you know what it's referencing, let me know. Okay, and I'm gonna quickly just check outside. See what it's like, and if there's any loot. Because sometimes, oh wow, bad weather, there can be loot laying around here on these crates and that. Doesn't seem like it now though. Okay, back in we go. Okay, and we'll check these upper areas here. Off. And here we got a wheelbarrow. Oh, Bill Bailey. Check this. And that's it, I guess. Right? Not much loot up here. And then in here we got. Ah, got something very special in here. This stuff will come in. kit. You definitely can survive a spawn here. I've done it quite a few times. Spawn down interloper. You have to do it on custom though to pick it, but perfectly possible to survive and no problem. Here we go. All of these are locked well. Nothing in them though. That's funny. And then we got this little guy. Teddy! And I don't know about you, but I think it would be nice if you could pick up Teddy. That would be nice. 
can be like your little companion you take with you. Like Wilson and Castaway. I tell you what though, this is what the giveaway I mentioned in the beginning. We're giving away some Tales from the Far Territory codes. Uh, one in this episode and one in each of the next two episodes, courtesy of Hintlen who gave it to me. So if you would like a copy of Tales from T Far Territory for yourself or a friend on Steam, here's the giveaway for this one. We need a name for this Teddy. Could just call him Teddy, of course, but we need to be calling him something. And I'm fresh out of ideas, so maybe you get a suggestion. So if you have a suggestion of what you think this Teddy should be called, feel free to write it in the comments on this video on YouTube. But if you want to enter the giveaway itself, go on my Discord and there's a channel called Giveaway and you write your suggestion there and then we'll pick the name we like the most. Feel free to like other people's suggestion as well to indicate that you like it. And we'll find a name for this guy. We need a community name for this teddy bear. Uh, and then hopefully one day we can pick him up. Isn't that nice? But yeah, if you want to have a code, or if you just want to enter for the fun of it, but not want to win, feel free to suggest a name for this guy, and we'll figure it out. If you're watching this in the far future, that is to say, far away from August 2023, <laughs> we'll probably have decided by now, and uh, you can see who won. Okay, so that's Teddy. Alright, let's keep looting. And thank you to Hintlin for giving me codes, how nice of them. Okay. Then here, I think there's some drawers, yeah. Maybe in here, nope. I think these really look like you can pick them up, which is so confusing. Baseball! That would be cool to pick up, but what would I do with it though? Oh! Stained paper. Yeah, I'll read that. I think I have read that before. Uh, most of the notes in the game, I never read them. I have read them before, like the first time I found them, I read them. I was like, oh, okay. And after that, I, I always pick them up. I don't really read them. But maybe one day I can browse through them. They are all in the journal in your inventory, so you can read them whenever you want. Okay, and then we have the open area. Let's do that now. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> Got some chocolate. Firewood, sure, why not? And then you can loot these hatches here. And then you can go inside, but I don't think I ever found anything in the planes. In either the cockpit or the one in the back. I don't think I ever found anything here. At least not an interloper. I can't remember it ever happening. I don't know if you ever found anything. But the hatches can have stuff, I think. Yeah, that's good. Might as well go through it to check though, but it doesn't look like anything to me. And check the sides here, always check the sides here. Because uh wait, did I check these rooms? Yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah I did, didn't I? Did I check these rooms? I'm not sure now, did I? Did I just do upstairs and not downstairs? I'm a bit Uncertain now. <laughs> oh yeah, and I recognize it, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Did I loot this? No, I didn't. I didn't check these rooms. Oops. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you want to check these areas over here too, because uh, there can be scrap metal, there can be uh, a pry bar. Got it. I need to do something. Check these. If you're playing on lower difficulties, make sure you check the tires. Because there could be knives embedded in the tires. That won't happen on Interloper though, but on Stalker and stuff, you can find knives in these tires. Uh, so make sure you check them. Hintlin likes to hide things, you know. Okay. Am I stuck or something? What's happening? The undersides here. You can send it has rope, for example, which we don't need. At least not yet. 
But you can find misc stuff. So here's a fuse. Uh, don't see anything else. Yeah, you can find misc stuff. All right, let's loot the rest of this. I need to loot that plane and this helicopter. So, and the helicopter also, remember, you can actually loot these baskets. These baskets can have stuff in them, but also underneath here, the hatches can have stuff in them too. And again, on Interlope, I never found anything in there, but could still be there. And then in the back here, actually, <laughs> I've never really found anything in except for like the old chocolate. But then the other day, I did find stuff in here after all. So this is, the tip this is an average, typical, random... Uh, interloper locker which usually has nothing but you can find like a bandage or chocolate or something in the uh, the front i've never never found anything in the front like ever i don't think there's anything in here and we got this and let's check this too Oh, did I check this already? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, okay, that's it then. So that's the hangar. That's the main things to loot. Uh, but then there is also the basement. And the basement is a unique area in this region uh, for two reasons. One is that the basement is the only area in the game where you are immune to glimmer fog and you won't get insomnia. Uh, but that's insomnia is more of an inconvenience than anything, so I wouldn't worry too much about that part. And then uh, there is also uh, a cool thing down here, which is that this place actually ooh, matches. I think I can use this. Very nice. It has a forge, as you can see. Look at that, a forge. The fourth forge in the game. Before this was added, there were only three. Now there's four. And then there, load of coal. We should probably won't need all of that, but I'm gonna pick all. Oops, pick all up. Got a bed we can sleep in. Uh, and we got some loot around here, some misc loot. We got oh accelerant that I missed over there. Sack of potatoes. Got a potato in there. Uh, and yeah, got a workbench. And actually, we don't really have like a storage solution other than the lockers upstairs. So I might actually put stuff out here on display. That might be what I, I'm going to do. Do this. Did I find a refueling thing here? Yeah, I did. Let's refuel this. And I'm going to uh, actually drop some things and just store it here. Oh, that's good, yeah. Put it on the edge. Okay. Very dark here. So let's uh, get out some stuff. Well, first of all, we don't need this much coal. So let's just dump all this stuff here. Okay, and then we'll put this here as well. And that as well. And then some misc stuff. So, for example, this. Just store it. Like, we'll make a little system here on the table. Well, uh, we can carry this in. We don't need this, though. That's fine. And I found some stuff that we can just drop on the floor, I think. Antiseptic. Put that here. Clothing we'll put it on the floor. That was a hat. <laughs> okay. And then... Uh, uh, we don't, I'm going to leave all the cooking stuff here. Uh, for now. I'm not going to carry that around because it's kind of heavy. So I'm going to leave that here. Uh, we don't need this either. We don't need these. Uh, don't need these. Don't need this for now, at least. Let's leave four of these here as well. Don't need these. Okay, so we got rid of some stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's just put this, like, flour, cooking stuff we'll put here. This takes longer than usual, but that's just because... 
I want to be able to see it. And there isn't really a good place to store this stuff down here. Not to mention that... Um, um, if you put it in a container, it can expire, which you don't really want. Uh, can opener, yeah, sure. Put that. We'll figure out the nicer system later. All the cooking stuff goes over there. Potato. Acorns. Oh, put them here. Nice little acorns. Use that's here yeah, for now. Spray paint. Put that next to this. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how do you move stuff? Um, but if you if you didn't know how to do that by now, it's very easy. You just right click, right click, and the equivalent on uh, on console. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna eat some of these things to keep well fed up. Oops, I did not mean to drink that. And uh, so the dog food as well. That's fine. <clears throat> and then we can go out and loot some of the outside. Come on, let's got it. Yeah, fatigue reduced, yeah, but that's because I drank a bit partially. But there we are. Uh, this is going to be our base. You can also just use the lockers upstairs with a lot of back and forth. I'm just going to use this for now. I'll go from there. Very nice. Let's go up and out, see what's outside. So outside there's a few missed places to check out. The main one being the, the tower, the control tower. Which of course has the radio. We can now douse this. Yeah, okay. What's the weather out here? Alright, not so bad. A little cold, but okay. Check the cars, can't see anything. Let's see. I don't think there's anything in the vices here. Let's check this um, helicopter here. Just in case. And check all of this. Oh, there we are. Bandage and disinfectant. Yeah. Found something. <laughs> Crows flying around there. Going kit. Oh, okay, finding all sorts of stuff. There's some lockers above me also. Uh, these ones here, but you can't reach those. There is an extra you can use to reach them, but I think they're always empty. I, mean, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it turned uh, sunny. How nice. Then we can make a fire if we get cold. Sweet. Could make looting easier. Let's see here. We can make a fire, like, I don't know, here or something. Just anywhere random. Yeah, on top of this door, sure. Why not? Uh, just to have a heat source kind of near us. Using the maglens. I use the maglens whenever I can. I try to avoid using matches when I can, but sometimes you have to, to survive. Or if you need to cook like a, an animal, then you need to use the match. As you can see, I'm using them very sparingly. I'm not sure, sure even how many matches I've used this run. We're on day 80, and I have no clue how many matches I've used. Perfect. Let's put both of these on. We got a lot more in there. So let's just loot this. Too cold. Too think. Uh, we can actually make some water. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we have to wait. Uh, place skillet. Make water. Make a liter of water in both. Check inside. Okay, actually it's cold in here, but barely. Oh, aquapore and bandage. Hmm. 
And wow, I'm finding all sorts of things in here now. Wow, okay. And here I'm going on about like, oh, you can almost never find anything on Interloper, but it's a feast. And the hatch. <clears throat> Let's check here too. some uh, tools. I think those tools are always there. I don't think I've ever not seen them there. There are a few places that always have tools. That's one of them. I think the other one is um, like Skeeter's Ridge. I think it always has tools. Fire, firewood. You won't die, Astrid. Also, Astrid, it's nice that you have your voice back. You transitioned to Will there for a little while. Craft. Oh, can I make fire and arrows? No, I need sticks. Uh, do you need bad torches? Sure. Let's do that. I would like to get some fire and arrows. Don't have that many. Let's just do that. Let's try and warm up while we're at it. There we go. Pick these up. Make another liter. Let's go for it. Okay. Let's grab a torch also. Oh wow, that was a bad torch. Did I loot this? No. And I'll go and check inside. There's never anything in there. I'll tell you what, we'll just check. Just in case, you know, I'm wrong. But I didn't think so. And another helicopter, I think this is the last helicopter, I think. Except for the crashed ones. There's uh, two crashed helicopters, I think. I think it's two. There's a couple of trucks as well. I saw something move, but. Okay, check the hood. I guess it's battery for future use, which is not really any use at all on Interloper, but you can level gunsmithing to level 5 on Interloper if you want to. It doesn't really do anything, but you can do it. or something. Just a bad torch. Getting cold now, but that's alright. There's a fuse in here. Oh, so cold. I don't really care if I get cold now. Let's check this also. Let's check the boot of the car. Because uh, you can find tools there sometimes. Not so much on Interloper though, but on low difficulties. You can find hammers and stuff buried in the snow. Make sure you check those if you're on lower difficulties. Alright, we're cold, but that's okay. Alright, then we got the terminal here. The terminal's important because in here there are a bunch of suitcases. I'm actually warm in here too. And those two cases matter because for us, and this run, you remember, we only have one pair of wool socks and one pair of these. So we kind of still need those two things. Uh, so we still want some loot. And it would be nice to find out, if I'm honest. I'm running out of places to look for them. This <laughs> oh! Wow! 
exactly what I wanted. Literally, like one of the one of only two items missing. Fantastic, and it's not ruined yet. Thirty-five percent. Fantastic. Jeans, we need that. But we need wool socks, though. This oh, come in handy. another one. That's convenient. Okay, we can actually maybe even switch it now. Yeah, that's better. Torch is not really used for anything here. It's just extra light, but also like a little bit extra warmth. Car battery. Okay, we don't need that right now. I'll take it. Ethan's. Okay. Uh, oh, a flare shell. Nice. One more flare shell. Well, I mean, I'll take it. That's super useful. Nice. That was big, 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 big success. Absolutely a big success. Now, here's the other big thing. Yeah, we have the radio tower or the control tower. And here we got a bunch of stuff on the ground. In here, you can find peaches. You can use to make that stew thingy. Sometimes there's a bedroll in here too, which would have been great, but no bedroll today. And around here, there's a bunch of stuff, and all of this stuff here is to repair the um, Gotta warm up somehow. the uh, transmitter here. I'm actually, gonna drop this one and one in case. And that's in here. So we need to actually repair this stuff here. But I'm not going to do that now. And I'll tell you why. Because if I repair this, the moment you repair it and turn it on, you actually trigger an aurora. Uh, not right now though, because it's daytime. But if you at uh, the next night, so tonight, there will be an aurora. Uh, it happens every time. Uh, I, I've never had it not happen and I've never seen it not happen. So when you repair the transmitter, if you are at night and repair it, it actually triggers an instant aurora. That's just so you can use the radio right away. Here we got matches. That's great. These matches are not guaranteed, but they are one out of, I think, four possible locations they can spawn. So they are very often found here. If they're not here, there'll be some other place. Uh, hunters, there's, there's a hunter's blind. Uh, I don't know where else there is, actually. But yeah, this is one of the places. But this match over here is guaranteed. Yeah, these matches. Hope nobody needs this. Anymore. I always say. So if you spawn in uh, Forsaken Airfield, or you just want to go here and you need matches, go here right away. Go here first, if anything, and get these matches. And then you get from there. And then you got some misclute around. We'll check all these drawers, of course. Check all of these cabinets. Scrap metal. Very nice. Finding a lot of loot there. Ooh, wow. Coffee. That's fantastic. That's very rare. I'm getting some good luck here. Good luck. Fortune smiles on us today. But the main finding of all the random stuff I found is by far the, the sweater. Now we just need wool socks. If we're super lucky, we can get the, the red leggings, but they don't really spawn. Not really an interloper. But yeah, wool socks. That's what we need. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Then this is one more thing, really. Go all the way up this tower here. And we get to the control station of the airfield. And up here, <coughs> we can find the radio. And we need that to do this the scene void uh, challenge, but also to find hidden caches around the world. There we are, look at this. What a nice view. Nice and safe. Nice and safe. Here's the radio. We'll wait with that for a second. Uh, oh, we got this rest pistol. Probably which we don't need. Because we... Uh, what do you have one? 
And that's it. And then it's just this, yeah. And there we go, it's the radio. Nice. The torch blew out doing that. That's annoying. Oh well. And now this triggered the signal void uh, challenge, right? So you need to repair all these transmitters. Now we can repair the one here in the Forsaken Airfield, and that allows us to get radio transmissions. But we will not find the signal void bunker, the fourth bunker. You have to do all the other three bunkers first. We have to go and find the one. It's in Hushra Valley, um, uh, Bleak Inlet, and... I think it is in Pleasant Valley, actually, the third one. And then you have to come back to Forsaken Airfield to find the fourth one. But you can use the radio. Oh, wow, it turned into a proper blizzard. You can use uh, the radio when there is a blizzard to use this function. Blizzard, what am I saying? When there's an aurora uh, to find the hidden caches around. You get a signal and you can find these little caches. On Intel, there's hardly anything in them at all. But on um, uh, other difficulties, there are. Oh, look at this. We have a glimmer fog going on. The glimmer fog is up. Now, I would repair this right away. And then we can actually use this radio. But the reason I'm not going to do it right now is because I think that's better suited for next episode. Because... I need to go out and, and find all the stuff. So I think I will leave that for later. Because uh, I, I need to go out in the open and find this cache. And then go and, and explore and find signals. It's a whole endeavor. We're not going to do that right now. We'll do that next episode. But now I'm going to head back to the base. As you can see, it's not night yet. You just got this glimmer for this fantastic effect. I love this phenomenon. Look at this. Electrifying the snow. So cool. And it's basically an aurora during daytime. But now all the electricity is working. And it's just everything is glowing. Oh, uh, put on. Mm, just like this instead. Oh, the, <laughs> this burn. This melted probably. So you get all the lights now working. It's basically an, an aurora. Uh, but without the aurora, so to speak. Which is very cool, but you can get insomnia. I have insomnia risk. And you have to go on underground to lower the risk. And the only place that is, is the basement here in the hangar. If you do get insomnia though, it's really a non-issue. What insomnia does is that it interrupts your sleep. So when you try and sleep, it will wake you up at a random point. Uh, you just can't sleep, basically. But unlike cabin fever, where you're just not allowed to sleep indoors, Insomnia is more like it rolls the die. So if you choose to sleep 10 hours to heal, it basically gives you a random time to wake up. So it could wake you up in 20 minutes, it could wake you up in three hours, or you could actually sleep throughout the night. Uh, so the only thing the insomnia really does is that it prevents you from healing. If you're low health, like I was in the beginning, and you need to sleep to heal, then you are a little bit, it's a little bit tricky because, um, um, you, you you might be interrupted and not heal properly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's do some more stuff here. Uh, let's put this here. And I want to drop some things that I found. Let's drop the clothing here. Uh, we found some clothing. Uh, this we can drop. And that. And this. And this. And this. And we've amazingly found another one of those. Leave that there, and then the rest of the stuff we found... Oh yeah, fir wood, we can put that here. Grab one of these. And the rest of the stuff uh, we found... We don't need these. We don't need these either. We can drop these. And these. And we need, don't need that. We don't need eight bandages, we just need four. And... You don't need these yet. So I'm going to drop these for now. Uh, you don't need this distress pistol. We don't need these fuses. At least I don't think so. We'll see though. You don't need this or that. 
all this. All these sewing kits, but we'll carry them. I guess that's it. Oh, and these, yeah. So let's just organize this in our little base. Make it all nice and tidy. Uh, this we can put here then. Well, I'll use the aquapore, we'll put that here. Scrap metal can just go here for now. Our peaches, we'll put them here. And this we'll put here, we'll make a little, make nice, nice little base here. Painkillers. Let's, uh, I don't really need the torch actually because we got this uh, glimmer fog going. We can just leave that actually. Spray paint is here. Peaches. More scrap metal. More bandage. I'll make this a bit nicer. Sometimes if you if you can't stack them next to each other, you can uh, you can place it far away and then move it closer. And if that doesn't work, you can also exit the building and then come back in and then so often you can actually place it there. Okay. Why is what the here? There we are. Nice, we got a little kind of a base going here. Let me put some notes here. So, got the radio. Uh, repair. Transmitter tower. Go uh, loot hunting and exploring. And also make new bow and hunt. I don't have that much food. So I kind of need to sort that out. Let's uh, eat something now. We'll eat uh, the soup, I think. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have eaten it in that order. It's a little bit silly. Let's also eat this. And this. And the beef jerky. And the sardines. And then I'm going to sleep for one hour here. If the glimmer fog is still going, we'll go out now. But if not, we'll go out later. Yeah. All right, so let's sleep here for one hour. And there we are. All right, fellow survivors. I think I'm going to leave you here. So that's Forsaken Airfield and the airfield itself. While our looter, good stuff. Found the uh, wool sweater and we found some other stuff too. Recipe and a bunch of misc stuff. There's a forge in here too. But right now we got a glimmer fog going. We could go out to repair and get the radio to work and look for some stuff. So I will do that, but that requires kind of venturing out into the open. So I think we'll do that next time. So next time I'm going to repair the tower, start hunting, and I'm going to keep exploring the um the region we're going to be here for a while it's a big region and once that's done we are heading back out of here to do a signal void but it's going to take a little while because there's a lot to explore and a lot to find i also need to hunt to get some more resources so yeah so that's it and don't forget to give away if you want to enter that and thank you for watching this is forsaken airfield let's see you next time for signal void bye bye survivors